This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, Invasion of the Tribulus Terrestris. What even is that? Um, final out processing point was successful. Uh, did you out process your way to Disney Plus? I did not, but I might because that Rise of Skywalker uh, teaser video thing, whatever collage, whatever they had was awesome. And we're going to talk about that. And we are going to talk about all these things and more with Crunchy. Hi. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 225 for Thursday, the 29th of August, 2019. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and we have a guest this week, and I'm going to click the proper screen right now. That's not the proper screen. <laughs> ah, was- there she is. We have Crunchy with us tonight. How are you doing tonight, Crunchy? I am doing lovely, kind of hungry. Now, you, you, you tried something tonight that Kent and I don't have. Well, I guess we have the opportunity to try. Well, I do here. I just don't because I don't trust it. And you kind of cemented Good the call. foundation of that. Yeah. Uh, grocery delivery. Kent, do you even have grocery delivery there? No, not a thing. I mean, yes, if I like call up a buddy and say, hey, <laughs> we, on your way over, could you grab a six pack? <laughs> that would probably work a lot better than real grocery delivery, <laughs> if we're being honest. Yeah, um, I have it here, but I haven't tried it because, well, Crunchy got her all of her stuff stolen tonight because the dude just vaped and did nothing. And now she tried to reorder, and the store's out because the other guy stole all the stuff. Okay, like in dead seriousness, this is a real thing. I know this sounds ridiculous, but I've literally lost like eight pounds thus far. Uh, today? Oh, 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 no, no, sorry. I got oh. distracted because I just got to the part where... I'm about to tell you about. Um, so you need to find like diets that work for you, right? And every time I try to eat healthy, there comes a point in the day where I'm like, God, I want pizza. And then I order like Domino's or something and I get really fat. Um, so as part of like, well, actually my whole supper. Now every day I have like these shitty 89 cent pizzas from our grocery store. They're so shitty. There's barely enough cheese to cover the pizza and they're only 300 calories. And so that's what I have for supper every night. So I ordered like 10 of those. (laughs) And there were only eight when the first guy got groceries. Now there are none. (laughs) Oh, man. He's going to like deliver a pack of soda. It's going to be so dumb. That's going to be shitty. (laughs) Yeah. This guy stole my groceries. (laughs) Man. Go ahead, Kent. (laughs) That's hey, I, I I have a question for you guys. When when you guys hear the two words together, goat head, what do you think of? Beer. Um, goat head. Yes, goat that, head. That's gonna be uh, deli meats. Oh, or no, that's I, boar's I, head. That's boar's head. Oh, oh, I thought you were thinking of head cheese. No, no, because that'd be <laughs> pig head, which is actually closer to boar head than it is goat head. But I don't. Where are you going with this, Kent? <laughs> so <laughs> you can okay. So I put a link in the show notes uh, with a with, of, to a photo, right? And it goes to something called Tribulus terrestris, more commonly known in the Southwest as goat head weed. Um, goat head weed. Yeah, and I don't mean the good kind of weed. I mean the worst kind of weed. The kind of weed that gets in your backyard and um, makes really thorny little flower things that dry up and become hard and pointy. And basically, they're the devil's plant. (laughs) They have invaded my backyard over the last week or so. I have a four day weekend starting tomorrow. Yeah, I know the same thing last week. Uh, I didn't know there was one this week until just a couple days ago. So it's amazing. But I have a four day weekend this weekend and I have a feeling I'm going to spend about three of those days at least fighting off this invasion. That sounds awful. Yeah. I'm going to spend two of the days at the fair. At the Alaska State Fair? Yes. And unfortunately, they got the dates backwards. So tomorrow night is Dropkick Murphys. Mm-hmm. And then Sunday is um, Jeff Foxworthy. 
So I'm going to go to both shows. Okay. But if Dropkick Murphys was on Sunday, I could have some edibles prior to going to the show. Instead, uh, I'm going to be sky high watching Jeff Foxworthy instead, which might actually <laughs> make him funny. I don't know. That Yeah, I was going to say, that sounds like the better deal, actually. <laughs> so, Dropkick Murphys are fun live, though. Uh, I'm hoping so. I haven't seen them live. I've, you know, uh, it's good. There should be a good show here in Alaska. So you haven't talked about using edibles on this show. Can you, can you remind folks why that's going to be a thing on those certain dates? Uh, because I will be, uh, officially retired. Ah, no yeah. longer a member of the active duty military. Right. Old people. So, <laughs> Are you going to start wearing one of those those veteran hats? No. <laughs> you should get a cane. They're fun. No, I, I have a I have a veterans U-Haul hat because they give them free to all the U-Haul people that were veterans. Um, but no, I'm not I'm not, I'm not going to be the the self celebrating veteran that I see all over the place. Yes. Yeah. I, I see them all over the place here as yeah. well, and I could never ever see myself that way. I, like I don't even put the the like veteran license plate or any of that kind of crap that mm. like, I don't, I don't know. I don't like advertising that to anyone. For now me. I will. So in, in, in Alaska, if you get at least a certain percentage of disability, they'll give you a veteran plate and it's free for life. So you don't have to pay um, registration on your vehicle anymore. Oh, that I would do that. Right. I'm a cheap bastard. Yes, exactly. And if it's over a certain other percent, you get a handicap placard uh, version of it. So you get to just park in the handicap spots. I'm all for either one of those. <laughs> but other than that, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to have like Air Force veteran on my back window or anything. Yeah. You're not going to wear the t-shirt or. No, or... no. I you, you won't even know that I was military at one time. Right. People would bring yeah. it up and I would just be like, hey, cool. There's beer over here. Bye. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm doing my best to to be a veteran in disguise myself. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that uh, was, that, that was there fun. Are, there's a grocery store around here yeah. that has, like, uh, pregnant women parking. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I drove, I parked there all the time out of bitter resentment for pregnant people. Because, I mean, they're the... Okay. Well, also, well, keep being, in mind, being a, that you've, you, as far as we know, you've never been pregnant, and you're never nope. going to be pregnant because nope. you got that problem fixed. Yeah. Um, I, did. I can understand how you how you'd not see the the value of that and and take advantage okay. of it. Okay. Also, keep in mind, like I was legit handicapped for a long time, and uh, you didn't like, get no parking. I did get the parking, but, you know, usually, like, a pregnant woman parked in it. She's like, sorry, I'm pregnant. I'm handicapped. If you want to compare being pregnant to getting, like, run over, getting, like, I mean, you do get a lot of money stolen from you from kids. Um, but, like, you know, like, I just can't imagine being pregnant is as bad as breaking 13 bones and being retarded. Like, right. but you feel like you deserve that parking spot more than I do. Hmm. Um, I don't know. And not to mention just like every time ever, if I'm like, you know, I was like, after that, I was non weight bearing for six months and I'm like, my feet hurt. And they're like, Oh, you think your feet hurt? Wait till you get pregnant. Or like, I'm like, you know, uh, literally, literally anything ever. I worked 80 hours a week. Um, and then went to night classes after that and got like three hours of sleep a night. And I'm like, I'm tired. They're like, Oh, you think you're tired or like, you know, anything ever like, Oh, you think you're broke? I know you just lost half a million dollars, but you think you're broke? Like, they're so obnoxious of, like, I have the worst life ever. How can you not want this? Oh, my God, you're such a horrible person. And I have a lot of bitter resentment for those people. So, yeah. <laughs> my, so one of my former coworkers was a single active duty uh, military member mother. And she... <laughs> She would get so pissed off at the commissary when there's like two or three empty parking spots that are reserved for spouses of deployed service members. And she was pregnant on active duty while raising an older child. And she had to park like, you know, in the very back and mm. walk like half a football field to the commissary while she looks at these fucking empty parking spots. 
of someone that, well, reserved for people who have no issues walking. And, yeah. See, I'm going to go down that train just a little bit further. One more stop. Oh and boy. the spots, the only spots that really get me going. Okay. I, I use the veteran spots at Home Depot and Lowe's because they're, oh. they're good parking spots and I, I'm entitled to them. I don't think we have those here. Oh, uh, see, they're coming. Half of the population of this town is. Yeah. Um, because there's no other reason to live there besides the base. Um, yeah. I, I, do, I don't mind the Colonel parking spots and the Chief parking spots up front. I get it. Yeah. Uh, the pregnancy parking spots. No, I get it. I've I've got a few kids. I've seen the issues pregnant women have. The handicap spots. There's maybe too many because they're never all full. But it's, I get it. It's state law or whatever. Like I understand. The ones that get me. The ones that really piss me off are when a fucking spouse of a colonel or a chief will use their colonel or chief spot to park right up next to the fucking building like they are entitled to it like they earned it and half the time half the time now I understand there are there are wives out there there are spouses there are husbands that take care of things while their 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 military spouse is doing right you know doing the constitutional work I understand that I get it that's not the majority the majority of the spouses that I know, that I've seen, that I've experienced, are the dependipotamus. That's I was about to use the same word. I've also heard the word dependapanda, but I don't like that nearly as much as dependipotamus. Yeah, dependipotamus. Uh, and the dependipotami, you know who they are. When they get out of a car, they clearly don't take care of themselves. They're not taking care of their kids. They don't, they obviously don't take care of their spouse. And if you see them with their spouse, you can look at it and go, that's a spouse. That's, that's a military member that could use some spousal support at home and they're not getting it. And it just pisses me off. And this, this is clearly, I've not been the best person in my life. I've made some, <laughs> some remarks to people that I regret. Colby Sidnor, I'm talking to you. Um, I've not been the best. The most woke, sing, the, the most woke uh, middle-aged white male in the world. That's not me. I'm trying, but there's one bias, one prejudice that is going to take an entire lifetime to get over, and that's them fucking depend upon my. <laughs> God, they piss me off. Only, uh, dude, o- only dude's partially. Gone wild. Only. Dude's gone wild. Says. Do you know who my husband is? Right, exactly, exactly. And I was married to one for like ten years. I I get it. I know, I know the trap you're in, service members married to depend upon my. I I understand. Oh, it pisses me off. Don't see. You... I was gonna say there are people that do that too, like children of people that are handicapped that do that too. But God, your description just goes into it so much more, and it's so much better than I would have done. <sighs> it, I it it I <laughs> like there are there are a lot of people I can put up with a racist more better than I can put up with a dependipotamus. Mm. Like well, be, they're both. because because it you they're. Though to be fair, yeah, that's that's true. That is a Venn diagram with a very large carryover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay. So en- enough with the anti depend Um Speaking of people we don't like, the Division Two is on sale for half off right now on the on the U store until the September second. Um, I know on this show I talked about my love for the Division. It's it's a great loot shooter, cover shooter. Uh, it's not your your your. Call of Duty, you just go out and shoot things five million times. Um, Call of D- uh, Division Two is even better than the first one. It's more realistic. the The targets are less bullet spongy. It's a lot more fun, and I've only played it for about three hours. But god damn it, I had to have it once I started watching reviews and saw that it was on sale. And I fucking love that game. And uh, uh, Ethan Kane seventy seven. If you're if you're uh, uh, trying to play and you want to hook up, because holy shit, I love me that game. Okay, nice. you're you're not into shooters like well you're not really into games but you're not into shooters at all. Uh not really. I mean I used to be like yeah. like 25 years ago. Yeah. When shooters too. <laughs> yeah. This well and and that's just it. This is like uh it's not your it's not your 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 
meat expr- extravaganza. Like it's not just all just shooting people for forever. There's right. a lot of strategy to it, and that's the part that I really enjoy. And that's why this particular game I like, but most others I don't. Are you into video games at all, Crunchy? I'm too poor to be into video games. She she said I'm I'm a I'm a Reddit girl, not a gamer girl. <laughs> I don't have to pay for Reddit. I mean, I pay for a laptop, but laptops are essential in life, really. Mm. Um, my newest video game system is a Nintendo 3DS, and oh. that's only because at the time I got a Nintendo 3DS, uh, my house payments were four hundred and fifty dollars a month. So, yeah. <laughs> you could afford it. Yeah, or you couldn't afford to do anything else. So you got the thing that you, I'll pay a little money now, so I can enjoy oh, it for a I long time. I could afford everything when I live there. I wish I, I wish my house payment was four hundred fifty dollars a month. Holy crap! Yeah, I could raise a child on the difference between uh, four hundred fifty dollars a month and my mortgage. Well, they uh, they made me put down a sixteen percent down payment because my credit sucked. Mm. So. Mm. Has yeah. your credit gotten, I was 19. I didn't have enough forms of credit. Ha, has your credit gotten better? Uh, yeah, because, I mean, like, it, 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 I still didn't take loans for college or anything. My problem is I don't take loans for anything, so it doesn't count as credit where most people are in debt. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I took the loan out on the house eventually when they let me, and I've gotten a couple credit cards, so... <laughs> Like, the problem yeah. wasn't that my credit was bad. The problem was that I didn't have enough. I needed right. three right. forms the, of credit, and I didn't. So. The fastest yeah. way to build credit is to get a credit card with a, well, to start out, get something with a low um, a, a low uh, limit. A balance. Limit, yeah. Get something with a low limit, like like 500 bucks or something like that. Charge about 100 bucks on it each month and pay it off every single month so you never pay interest. Yeah. And oh, do before you know it, like you're going to, your credit score is going to go through the roof. Kent, what was your first credit card? <laughs> DPP. <laughs> yeah, okay. you know me. Uh, okay. Other than DPP. <laughs> other than. Star <laughs> card. <laughs> other than, other than the star card, AFI's okay. bullshit uh, that they tempt us with as soon as we come out of tech school. Yeah. I, um, it it might've been a discover card. It was either a discover card or a probably a MasterCard that I got through a credit union. Mm. How about you, Crunchy? Amazon. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you just made us feel old. That's awesome. Yeah. It, it had a $400 credit limit. Uh, my first credit card was actually a Sears card. <laughs> Ooh. It had a $400 limit, and the first thing I bought with it was a web TV. Oh, my God. <laughs> Now you just made yourself look old. <laughs> and we're not even talking MSN TV. No. You admit what you said when you said web TV. The original Model 1 web TV. There was basically a keyboard and... A giant box that hooked the TV. Yes. Yes. A, wi- a wireless keyboard. It was RF, not Wi-Fi, because we didn't yep. have Wi-Fi. I was Wi-Fi. so <laughs> jealous of you <laughs> for having that thing. Until that $220 phone bill came in from dialing long distance because they didn't have any local areas in uh, uh, Sumter, South Carolina to call into. Oh, yeah. Awful. Bad. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't get a Sears credit card. Reminds me of, reminds me of dial up in Japan. Because even though the the ISP was local, every time you call anywhere downtown, even you call your next door yep. neighbor, you're paying a toll. Yep. It's 10 yen every three minutes, which t- in is roughly 10 cents, yeah. give or take, depending on the uh, the day. But it was 10 cents. But, but it, it, it was up to three minutes. So if you called for five seconds, it's 10 cents. But if you called for like 45 minutes, you only paid for the first three minutes. No. No, no, I don't I know. Because that that's why I had like a that's why I had like a like a five thousand yen or no, but fifty thousand yen phone bill or wait, did I do that wrong? <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Like a like we, a several our, our, our ISP on base. We only had one ISP option list. We wanted to call off base, and we could call on base and get the ISP there. It was super slow, and we were only allowed ninety hours a month. Um, but it was free. You didn't have to pay. Well, no, no, no. You had to pay the ISP, but you right. didn't have the toll charge. So everybody had multiple accounts because we were all using the internet all the time. <laughs> exactly. Yep. 
And oh, you had multiple man. phone lines probably because you couldn't use the phone. Right. If you were on the internet. Right. Um, I I have a question though, Crunchy. Now, usually when when you come on the show, you've had like one hell of a week. You're just shit's going crazy. Like like tonight, you had something going on earlier tonight, which is not the usual case. Usually, you've had like five things going on throughout the week. So by the time you come on Ritual Misery, you're either completely flustered or absolutely pissed off, or <laughs> some combination of both. Really? But, do you, am I? I feel like I do a good job covering it up. Yeah. Oh, that. Well, I mean, we know. <laughs> okay, because last time, okay, so last time, you know how like it was the day before Valentine's Day, because I made you guys reschedule your show because I didn't want to be on on Valentine's Day because I yes. have a boyfriend for once in my life. I remember. You know, I this. was yeah. actively, and we were like making jokes about how I was gonna have drugs delivered to my house and I might have to leave. Yes, that was my stuff back. I was actively going through a breakup as I was on the show last time. Oh. So I didn't really bring the energy as much. I wasn't in a good mood. <laughs> oh, wow. I was just going to go on to say today you've got multicolored hair. Like, like you're not, you don't, you don't look frazzled at all. You don't look like you've had a hard week. You don't look, you look like you're actually really relaxed, happy, enjoying, enjoying life in general. And you know, as I was like thinking of stuff to talk about for this show, cause mm. I don't have any projects. I was thinking about all this stuff going on. I'm like, my life is hilarious. <laughs> so, like, life is fun. <laughs> well, uh, so, but it says in here that you're you were suit shopping. Yes. Okay. Oh, 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 so, I, now I can imagine why you'd be suit shopping, but I, I'd like to hear Kent. Please tell me, Kent. Tell me. Kent, why do you think she was <laughs> she was suit shopping? Shoot shopping. Shoot um, shopping. It's a tongue twister. Yeah, so uh, suit shopping. I think uh, I think this is for the cabaret show that she's auditioning for. Mm. Uh, so, so you're I'm thinking you're thinking like Madonna the, suit, right? With like the 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 assless slacks. Oh, I don't know about asses. I, I I mean, I think this definitely has a top hat and a cummerbund. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and maybe nothing else. <laughs> maybe nothing else. I don't know. <laughs> top hat, cummerbund, know. and high heels. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Of course. Um, so, I mean, how how close are we? Well, with purposes well, before here? before we before we go there, I'm going to say that I think you were suit shopping because I mean I thought about a few things. Like maybe you were applying for a job, you're trying to get a different job or whatever else. But I think you enjoy your job too much to be buying a suit for a different fucking job. That just wouldn't make sense. Well, I do have to wear suits at my job. You know that, right? Well, yeah, but you wouldn't. Now we okay. Yeah, but you wouldn't put that in the show notes if you just like if it's just a normal shoot. Right. Right. Um, so, like a lot of presumptions are going on in my brain right now. <laughs> I'm going to say that you're suit shopping because you are taking part in a a mm, how to put how to best, best put this a transgender stage show in which all the women are dressing up as men and all the men are dressing up as women, regardless of their cis or uncis ability or whatever. So a cabaret. Not, not a cabaret, <laughs> though. This is like a production. Like, this isn't just the like teasing people with sex. This is like a, a full-on stage production. That's what I'm going to go with. Who's closer? That's the big, that's the big <sighs> question. We basically said the same thing, Amos. But I know. That's <laughs> my... I'm not performing. Oh. I'm watching a performance. Oh. What kind of so, performance? Uh, if you guys aren't familiar, like Doug Stanhope is my favorite comedian, right? And every time he does a show, he's in a really ugly suit from Goodwill. It's just this thing. He had a thing in his last special talking about how they're not just shitty suits. He spends a lot of time putting these together from all the Goodwills all over the country. <laughs> and uh, me and my coworker, who also enjoys Doug Stanhope, we're always talking about how, like, someday we had to go get drunk and go to Goodwill and go suit shopping. It's never happened yet. But Doug Stanhope is coming here, San Antonio, in October. And I'm like, shit, I have to buy an ugly suit. <laughs> and then I remembered last month I was in... Round Rock, suburb right outside Boston. 
and uh, I was trying to kill time, so I went to Goodwill, and I saw this gorgeous, gorgeous Hawaiian suit, and it was my size, but I was poor last month. I was super poor. I went on two vacations, and I had an ex that, that, that ex, that really fucked me over and cost me, like, $500, um, so I was, like, poor, um, so I couldn't afford it, but I'm like, it's only been a month. It could still be there, um, so I get somebody to bring me to the Goodwill in Round Rock. And I'm like, I need to find this suit. I need to find it. I need to find it. And it's gone. It's not there. And I was so heartbroken, which I did find this really, really ugly, like Easter looking monstrosity um, that I was buying. But my heart, my heart isn't in it. I feel mm. like my heart was in the Hawaiian suit. Mm. But anyways, as I am buying this fucking old lady suit, um, I like, I'm talking to the cashier and he's like, you find everything you need today? And I'm like, no, this Hawaiian suit. And he's like, oh, I bought it. I'm like, what? Oh, like, yeah, I bought it. And I'm like, you mean the suit that was my size, probably way too big for you. Cause he was slim. Um, and was a woman's suit. And he's like, oh yeah, I, I wear women's suits. No, I mean, I had one person who could tell just by the stitching, but normally nobody notices. I bought it. And then I resold it for $50. It's the way the world works. You got to keep up. And I'm like, Oh, you asshole! Wow, <laughs> damn wow. him. He's probably your Uber Eats driver or, or, <laughs> or uh, grocery <laughs> delivery guy, <laughs> or a Goodwill cashier. Oh, jeez. So, so did you go ahead and get with the uh, the the suit that you just didn't quite feel? Yeah. 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 You still still shopping for another suit? Like hoping one will catch you. Get your attention. Yeah, I have until the middle of October, so I'm gonna look around. And now, how much did that suit cost you? Uh, the price tag on it was twelve dollars, but um, I think everything was half off. Mm. Mm -hmm. so, like or if you buy a lamp with it, it's it's like twenty seven percent off or something. Yeah, I mean, I didn't buy a lamp. I bought this sweatshirt. <laughs> Ken, has, Ken, um, Ken is obviously not going to Goodwill. You can't go to a thrift shop without buying a lamp. <laughs> I mean, them's the rules. I can. I, I did. Totally can. I'm, <laughs> I I haven't bought anything at a thrift shop in 30 years. Most of the stores in my town are thrift shops. Yeah? And they all have the ugliest lamps, and they're wonderful. No, I don't care about the lamps. One time I found a Savage Garden poster book, and my day, <laughs> like my week, my, my year was made. A poster book, <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Amazing. They had more than one poster, or is it just the same poster in different angles? <laughs> no, they had all kinds of them. They had some of like the band together. They had one of like the people individually. And uh, I am a big fan of Darren Hayes. He's my favorite singer. He did solo stuff after Savage Garden. He's gorgeous. He's the first guy that made me realize guys are fun to look at. And now I still only think that gay guys are cute. It's a problem. <laughs> Oh man, I think the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, that, so, how about that Mandalorian trailer, dude? Did you watch it? I did not. I am so freaking excited. So we we were mentioning Disney Plus earlier. This is going to be a launch show on Disney Plus. This is the first ever live action Star Wars television series, and it's about a bounty hunter, and he's a Mandalorian, and. One of my favorite things about the Star Wars universe, I mean, I love Jedi and Sith and the Rebels versus the Empire and all that kind of stuff, sure. But my favorite niche, I guess, in the Star Wars galaxy is all of the, like, fringe type stuff, like the smugglers and the bounty hunters and all the, like, criminal element and stuff like that. Like, Solo gave us a little bit of that. Like, Rogue One gave us, you know, a tiny little smidge of that. Uh, Mandalorian is, like, 100% that. And this has like Game of Thrones level budget per episode. And this trailer, like I was so, so, so excited for this trailer. I cannot wait until November. I, I did not watch it because I wanted to hear your reaction first. Um, Disney Plus, apparently you can get like a big discount if you do D23, you register with D23 and then by three years you can get it for like 60% off or something like that. It's like four bucks yeah, a month. Yeah, it's four bucks a month for the, for three years. You have to, you have to yeah. lock it in for three years. So it's like 140 bucks or something like that up front. Um, but it's, 
I think but, that's actually the bigger story, but that's more of a text story. Oh, but, I'll be back, guys. Oh, go to talk about your movies and stuff. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, but yeah, if you, if you sign up for D23, I haven't yeah. done this yet. I've heard from multiple people to include the wonderful Richard Gunther, uh, sign up for D23 free account. You don't even have to do the paid version. Just get a free account. And then within a day or two, you'll get an email saying, Hey, we have a special offer for you. Get three years of D23 or, uh, uh, Disney plus for $4 a month. And that is less than it costs for Netflix for one year. Right. Amazing. Especially Dude, if you're I'm paying for gonna, multiple streams like I am. Yeah, I, I was already going to get it w- yeah. without question. I would pay double what they're asking for it. Well, no don't, question. Don't, don't, don't say that because people who don't sign up for this deal are going to get that price a year in. <laughs> you know, uh, whatever. But I'm definitely doing this D23 thing. To get to get the uh, way discounted version, yeah. Because I don't think there's any version of reality where I'm not. Not only am I not getting D20, or I keep saying that Disney Plus, um, but I don't think there's a version of reality where I'm canceling it within three years. Especially not when you're paying for three years ahead of time. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> yeah. That's what makes it such a wonderful thing. Bad Weave says, "Yeah, it's a no-brainer." Um, yeah, like who's who doesn't want Disney Plus? That's especially for four bucks a month. Uh, you can't, man, there's so much IP there. Yeah. Um, Crunchy temporarily dropped, so that's why she's not there right now, but we'll get her back. Um, meanwhile, I want to mention something else that, that Disney has coming on. Yes, and this is not going to be on Disney Plus anytime soon. It is instead going to come to us in movie theaters this December. Yes. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the old play button here and go to... Go ahead. Yeah, fast forward to about a minute and ten, I think. About a minute ten, right about here? Right about here, yeah. Yeah. So for the audio listeners, this is the final minute of the D23 special look at uh, The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, The first minute and so is just kind of a nostalgic trip yeah. through all the star, previous Star Wars movies. And then it goes into this uh, never-before-seen scenes from Rise of Skywalker. Uh, amazing footage. Uh, there was a couple things that stood out to me, um, but I've watched this thing about 300 times, I think, and I'm, I'm really curious about your hot take on this, Amos. Um, I, I like it. I think it's going to be amazing. I'm really looking forward to it. If, if only because, um, I, I want to see the end of what they consider the style the Skywalker saga. Yeah. So that alone is exciting to me. I do want to see where the movie goes. I agree with most people that number eight was, um, I would say lackluster, but it, it, it wasn't a disappointment to me, but it wasn't everything I'd hoped it would be. But then it shouldn't have been because it, was, it wasn't the, the end of the series. There's one more. Yeah, because right. there's one more. Um, plus, uh, I think there's a lot of room, especially with the voiceovers at the end of Emperor Palpatine. Mm. Um, I think there's a lot of room for Daisy Ridley's character, Ray to go off the fucking rails. And I think yeah. that excites me a lot. Because so, I think that's one of the... I think that's where the story could really get in meta experience aside, I think that's where the story could really get deep and really get interesting. Right. So this movie better be like four hours long. Because how do you wrap this thing up? Or into- longer, whatever. It didn't <laughs> matter. As long as, as long as my ticket doesn't cost any extra, I don't give a shit. Right. So, so the two things that, that stood out to me in this trailer, the, the two major things, well, it's not even a trailer, just a little like minute it's a, of it's some a, footage. It's literally a preview. Yeah. It's not a trailer, I, it's a preview. It's, it's actually less than a full minute of, yeah. uh, of new footage. Uh, the first thing that stood out to me was when the, the Resistance ships came out of hyperspace. Um, that always gets me pumped. I, I always, I've always liked the scenes of a ship coming out of hyperspace, but mm-hmm. when you have a fleet come out of hyperspace like yeah. um beginning it, of the battle of endor in return of the jedi like, not not just out of hyperspace but into atmosphere 
Yeah, like into like they're about to fuck some shit up or get right. fucked. You know, um, that excited me, followed immediately by the like gigantic fleet of Star Destroyers. Yeah. Uh, did, did you did you watch any of the, the breakdown videos? No, I purposely, purposely staying away from those. Oh, OK, because uh, New Rockstars makes my favorite breakdown videos with EA Voss. And um, that's the one that played right after this on my queue. There's there's a lot of little tidbits here and there that are really really interesting uh, that that I thought were pretty exciting that lead into like some of the imagery that I didn't realize because I'm not very good with imagery um, the the hand holding stuff the leading from Kylo to Vader and then you can it, it just a lot of the things that were going on make me very very interested in some of the some of the yeah. nuance of this movie. Well, some of, some of the nuance, just general storytelling nuance. If you notice the the rebel ships or resistance ships, I guess when they enter the screen, they're coming from the left. They're going from left to right. Right. And then you see the star destroyers; they're coming from the right, so right yep. to left. That is a standard, uh, just generic storytelling trope where the good guys are always going left to right, which is like indicating moving forward. Yeah. And, the bad guys are always going from the right to the left and like watch any movie. And that's typically the way you're going to see villains will enter the screen from the right. Uh, things like that. That's just how our brains. Well, that and the, the, the rebels or the resistance or the, the whatever. The they, good guys. Yeah. They, they come in during like during daytime, whereas the, the bad guys come in during the night. Like it's it's a it's a nighttime scene. It's dark, you know. Yeah. the The second thing that stood out to me in this trailer is, a, of course, the thing that everyone is talking about, and it's the so called dark ray. It's where we see Ray, who we think is Ray anyway, in the final shot of this, holding a double bladed lightsaber. And by double bladed, I mean like two lightsabers and two handles connected. So it's like like almost parallel. hinged together at the hilt. Yeah, like parallel lightsabers. And she flicks her wrist and it like folds out into mm -hmm. a Darth Maul style double bladed lightsaber. Yeah. Uh, which which uh, is a red. throwback and to. It's, so, a, that's a throwback to earlier. They showed a picture of Darth Maul opening his lightsaber with both blades coming out. Right. Yeah. And, mm, you know, lots of speculation, of course. Why is Brit, why is Ray holding a red lightsaber and all of that? Uh, I, I know we're going to get those answers. My excitement of it is just, holy shit, what a cool fucking lightsaber. Uh, every, every you, know. you know, most of the new movies have been showing us a, a new lightsaber we've never seen before. And it's, um, I don't know. I like it. I like the new lightsaber designs. Yeah, I, um, I, I think there's a, especially if you watch the breakdown video, there's a lot of detail there that I caught, but I didn't really understand the significance of, but things like, uh, uh, at one point it shows Ray training in the forest and she catches her lightsaber, but she catches it with her left hand and she's got like a red bandage wrapped around her left hand. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's so many things that could be f the cause of that. And, um, I didn't realize that the little battle scene that shows with, with Kylo Ren and Ray at the end they're actually battling on the remnants, like the half submerged remnants of the Death Star. Well, you know? one can speculate that it's that. There's it, nothing that says this is a hundred percent what that right, is. Right. There's no neon sign, but if you look at yeah. the, yeah. if you if you take a close look, which is what they do, uh, yeah. There's there's a lot of things that, that little details sure. and I mean I don't doubt that that's what that is, but like also there's like that that's just a person saying that. Oh, I know what that is. Yeah, um, and looks like Crunchy's about to return, but she oh. looks like she might have got some soda or something. So while we're while we're waiting for her to join, uh, yeah. since we're talking about movies, let's go ahead and wrap up the movie segment by hearing what There's Big no Voice Jay the has to say the about food. the movie draft. <laughs> what? That sounds like an idea. Welcome to Movie Draft Minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of August 26, 2019. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay. Look, we gotta make this quick. I just bought the last Popeye's chicken sandwich, and I'm starting it with my life! 
Let's go to the scoreboard. Dean Game Nights in last place with $211.8 million. Dean Devon Squad's in fifth place with $519.3 million. Team Ever Drink is in fourth place with $775.7 million. Team Drunk It's Gaming is in third place with $990.9 million. Team Ritual Misery is in second place with $1,024.7 million. And in first place with $1,258.8 million, it's Team Movie Party. Watch your stream Team Movie Draft Minute. All totals of record as of August 20. 2019. DKG made some moves there with yeah. some uh, last little bursts from Lion King. Um, they're not going to catch us. I don't think they're going to actually bust into the billion dollar range unless Lion King just has a just long, 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 long legs. Um, also, even if they don't, three teams verging on a billion dollars this summer and movies are dead fuck off yeah and movie party sitting at almost 1.3 billion right now uh, they've got a mo- they got a big movie left and um yeah dude they're going to they're going to get the 1.5 billion pretty sure yeah really, cuz i mean i'm going to i'm going to contribute part. to them next weekend um uh, me too probably <laughs> <laughs> uh, next weekend, like the the like sometime during that week. Um, yeah. Did Did you watch it? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I've that, I've I've got to see that. I want to see it in the theater. I didn't see the original in the theater, and I'm sorry for it because I thought it was going to be shitty, and it was not. And I can't wait to see this new one. My kids saw the first it in theaters, and they waited in like this was like around the movie theater, like wrapping around the parking lot kind of line. It was a longer line than they had for Star Wars. <laughs> wow. It, it's pretty crazy. Um, hey, now it seems like a good time to bring Crunchy back. I think she's ready. Did you get your soda pop? Yeah, I got soda. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. about it, but I got soda. Uh, I've been telling her to give me a thumbs up when she was ready a- in the chat and I, oh. I, I wasn't, I didn't bother looking to see if she did. And then I had her muted because I knew she had stuff going on. So, um, I unmuted her just in time for her to answer your question. I feel proud of myself. So fuck off. Hey, uh, it is time to tell people all about this amazing thing we do called Patreon. Oh, like if we went to patreon.com slash ritual misery. Uh, I mean, that's one instance of it. That'd be pretty cool. Patreon.com slash virtual misery. That's, that's a place people go. Um, I mean, who, who would go there though? Like, um, so I'm looking at the list and there's one name that people might know. They might have recognized it's, um, Crunchai. Crunchai. Is that with a K? Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm glad you caught that. Crunchai with it's a Japanese. K. It's Japanese. Yeah. See, See, oh, wait, 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 Crunchy wait, knows Crunchai. Does wait, 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 wait. This is does Crunchai end with a Y? It it does. I think this might be Crunchy. No, <laughs> no, it's Crunchy at best. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that I think it's probably Crunchy, and I think everyone should be just like Crunchy and support for us for reasons. thirty months. Well, for I, I was going to say, I, I think people should be just like Crunchy for a lot of reasons. But one of those reasons is that she went to <laughs> patreon.com slash ritual misery. And subscribed wait, 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 wait. She went to patreon.com slash ritual misery and got her hair to be two rocking colors. Both of those things. <laughs> you know, actually, like I was looking at that in like my own mind. Like, I don't even believe that. I haven't known you guys that long. <laughs> I think you might be thinking of Crunchai. <laughs> See? Maybe it is Crunchai. See, I told you it was Crunchai. <laughs> be like Crunchai. <laughs> Head over to patreon.com slash ritual misery. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, now that we got Crunchai out of the way, uh, Crunchy a- made a video. Yeah, I was gonna say we have a special presentation. Yeah, crunchy, that. crunchy. Made, are we playing the? Whole, we're not playing the whole video, are we? I think we should. Well, I, don't, I don't know. Cr- crunch, it, uh, cr- crunchy. It's really long. I didn't plan on it being that long, but I was having so much fun making it. I I, I say we just get it's it's ten minutes long. Uh, we're gonna link it link to it in the show notes. I say we let crunchy. Uh, we'll we'll start it off and then we'll we'll cut back and then uh, we'll we'll call it a day okay. from there. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so this is uh, Crunch Files, uh, number uh, something, and this is the dumbest in the internet wormhole I've ever sucked myself into, and we're going to play a little sample of it right now. I'm going to be on a friend's podcast, and I guess we're supposed to have like a main topic or something that we're working on, so we have something to talk about, and I have nothing. So I saw this video about toast, and my mind was blown. <laughs> So I had to try it, but the problem is I only did that to one side of each piece of bread, and so it still tastes like burnt toast. <laughs> what you couldn't see is that there were actually enough breadcrumbs to like clean up a spill, like it was sawdust or kitty litter or something. <laughs> Which sounds pretty great with like eggs, like runny eggs. Oh right, no, no. Now you're onto something. It's like croutons for a salad that's too soggy, right? Like it, it, it helps <laughs> yes. firm up the eggs. Yeah, of course, eggs are never too soggy. Practicality, you are thinking. Yeah, well, it happens once <laughs> once a year about. Um, Wait, I make a dad joke in a second. Play another second. <laughs> so that experiment was kind of a bust or a crust. But now I'm. Oh, I should have played this. Oh, can't you lost it? Um, I, so first of all, I want to say that I actually learned a few things on. I'm not going to tell you what they were. Well, not that I could remember some of them because some of the things that they do. It, this is a 10 minute video of that I really enjoyed. This is probably the best thing you've ever done. I enjoyed it that much. <laughs> Like, I've been on your yeah. podcast before, and well, I enjoyed this better. Crunchy, you have peak. This is your back opus. Peak crunchy right here. <laughs> um, it, it is really great. Uh, I, I received the link last night, and I watched it, and I wanted to immediately watch it again. It's so good. Uh, for, for the audio-only listeners, go to uh, Crunch Files. Just search Crunch Files with a K, Crunch Files on uh youtube and watch her most recent video about bread it is it's amazing now crunchy what is the most uh, impressive thing that you learned about bread making this video um so many <laughs> yeah there was a lot to me, the the most impressive thing that I learned was that old uh, that the the France used to use the, was it French women used to use it as dildos, hard hard baked bread uh, as dildos. Switzerland, like... I believe. No, no, that was the other one. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> it might have been French because I was thinking the most like interesting one to me was in the in English women that used to like knead the bread with their vagina and use it as like a love potion. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like it's a totally different kind of yeast but whatever uh, oh. oh and there was something I didn't include about a woman that made bread with her yeast but that's so gross I'm like I'm not putting that in there uh, it's gross wow. like you're not putting it in your bread or you're not putting it in your video oh my god <laughs> oh. what are we doing right now <laughs> Kent is suddenly uncomfortable um, all right, Kent. What was what was the most impressive thing you found out about this uh, this video? Um, probably. Um, oh my, there there was so much. The thing that is that is sticking out in my mind right now is the guy that decided to fuck bread and report about it. <laughs> he talked about putting not, not just dirt. bread though. He he. he okay, so he Everything. talked about eating yogurt. As he fucked the whole damn grocery store. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. And he, and he wrote reviews on <laughs> all the different foods and how close they were to vagina feeling. And wow. My question is, if you're the type of person to go and, and, and fornicate with all the different items you can find in a grocery store, are you the type of person that I, who's, um, who, that I would trust with, the comparison to actual vagina, because how, <laughs> how likely is it that a person that does the entire grocery store has actually had vagina more than once? That's a good point. Uh, that was that was my question on that one. But I don't know. He could just be really prolific. I mean, you, you could if if you're like a fucking enthusiast. Maybe you just got bored with vagina and you needed something else. 
You just needed some some internet content. Uh, I'm I'm stuck on the board with vagina part. That's, <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how that works. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I yeah, it's pretty amazing. Uh, I don't I don't know. Um, so I like variety. So big, so. Since we're talking about I mean, food. Not vaginas, um, but. So Fucking Crunchy, I, I gotta I gotta ask you about your wiener. <laughs> yes. Okay, so are, are we are we talking about the fridge wiener? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that is actually the permanent location of that dick. Um I just didn't feel like moving it for the video. Um there's a slight story there if you guys want to know it, but otherwise, like, um, I'm I'm starting to question why you're on the show if you don't think we want to know the story behind the dick. <laughs> like, of course oh, yeah. we want to know the story know. behind the dick, the fridge dick. I do have to know. There's a certain point in that video where I'm talking about my old manager and I asked him if he had any bread memories and I ended up with a list of everywhere he's ever fucked mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh my god, I was just asking about bread and I'm like, holy shit. That's how I come off to most people, isn't it? And you're like, Crunchy, oh, let's talk about our, your travel site. And I'm like, what? Anal fisting? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, anyways, so I have this hobby in every area of my life where I just see what I can get from people for free or from like making deals. Uh, like when I go to pinballs, like our, our arcade, and I'm cashing in tickets, it's like a hobby of mine to be like, I want that thing in the display case over there for birthday parties. And they're like, oh, that's not actually something that we're giving out. And I'm like, yeah, but it's what I want. So how can I make you give it to me? And like, so this is a thing I do in every aspect of my life. Um, So I've started talking to sex toy companies, getting them to give me free stuff in like exchange for reviews. And I'm running out of places to put things. (laughs) So I just stuck it on my fridge and that one has killer suction. So it's, it's doing well. It's staying there. And then it's in the video and I'm like, should I address this? Cause you know, everyone sees it and they all have questions. Should I address this? And it, because the updated version actually came in today. So I have no use for it. The old one in anywhere. Um, so I actually came up with a real amazing, like practical, practical use for it um, that I wanted to tell you guys about. Um, of course, you which would. is why I needed soda. <laughs> so, so uh, I don't know how many people are familiar here. Um, I have a drinking problem, <laughs> and like I'm getting a lot better at like just not drinking as much. The problem is once I start drinking. It has a very, uh, like, meth-like effect on me where I have to have more. Like, Mm. once I start, I don't stop. Mm. And it's a problem, right? So, and I have to, I'm going to have to take you guys into my kitchen for a minute. So, what I found out is uh, this thing, it's a coming dildo, right? God, I need a stand or something. Hang on. This is so much more complicated than it should be. I'm sorry. Audio only listeners, um, you need to get the video version of this to get yeah. the uh, Crunchy has taken this into the kitchen. You can you can also go to youtube.com slash ritual misery or find the video version of our podcast in your normal podcast feed. Hmm. Okay. So what I have found. You can see the dick, right? Mm. Cool. <laughs> so what I found is this actually dispenses about a shot's worth of alcohol. So it's my bartender now. Um, so if you're somebody like me who tends to make cocktails of like bootleg mixtures of alcohol and alcohol, you can actually control how much you put in your drink by having your dick dispense exactly one shot for you. <sighs> Tell this is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Well, anyway, it's going into my soda now. And this is this is rum, not water. You have to trust me. I was going to get spiced rum, but Twin Liquors is actually having like a dollar day sale. And this was a really good deal. So I had to get it. But yeah. So I have a dick bartender on my fridge. 
Crunchy's what I'm saying. Dick. <laughs> Crunchy's dick tender. Yep. Oh my god. I everybody <laughs> get the ver- video version of this. You got to see it. Um I can't, can't I'm so I thrilled by this. I I kind of need one of those for my bar. <laughs> I might need one as well. Like, oh, just look for the company Love Toy, one word on Amazon, and order the the older version of their coming dodo. <laughs> it's really cheap, actually. So. D- d- does the new version not uh, not provide alcohol in in the same manner? <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and ruin uh, my Amazon algorithm here. <laughs> Do you want to see actually, the new version? Up. Uh, I mean, sure, why not? I mean, if if we're gonna get sure. if, Christ, if we're getting banned on uh, on Twitch, we might as well do it right. We're Actually, doing a tour of my house. It. So the new version, essentially, what they did is for the the extremist, um, they made everything bigger. So it would it might be a way to measure out like a a glass of wine actually. Um, and they made the hose bigger so that you don't have to worry about clots or anything. And it's just it's fucking huge. It's huge. So. <laughs> Yeah. <sighs> Wonderful. And it's heavy. So actually that suction's really good too. They they have impressive <laughs> suction. Um except on they sent me another one when they're like they're like, Do you want to try the new version? I'm like, Well, yes. But also <laughs> I see that you have a sliding skin dildo also. Can I try that? And they're like, Yeah, sure. Now <laughs> The suction sucks on the sliding skin one, but it's so realistic and I'm amazed. And it's even more amazing because I spend a lot of time on the internet looking at sex toys. And the only thing I've seen that is anything like this is Real Cock by Real Doll, and it's $500. So, yeah. Uh, Crunchy? Mm -hmm. Yes. We have Mm -hmm. asked you this question before. But I feel inclined to ask it once again. What's up? Why are you not streaming all of this all of the time? <laughs> not not the trial purposes, but you can make a video about each one of these individually. Yeah. It would be amazing. You could do yeah. an unboxing that's, video. That's actually what I'm starting, to be honest. That's why earlier in the show, na- show notes it said like I'm trying to figure out SEO. Yeah. I'm trying to get a ah. permanent job masturbating. So that that this this sounds like the best fucking thing <laughs> ever. Like the problem is I haven't really been promoting it on Twitter and stuff is because I don't think everyone um I'm afraid of everyone in Diamond Club knowing my porn name. <laughs> oh. Uh-huh. I mean not real porn, but you know. We but Oh my god, this 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 really goes so far. Um <laughs> I don't even know where to go after this. It, um I okay, I, so I, I do. Trial, I I I, I know exactly where to go after this. I I just don't know the like I've never been this like we've done a lot and said a lot on this show that that twit twit uh, not twit uh tweeter uh not uh twitch We've done a lot of things on the on that Twitch should have had a problem with and hasn't. But everywhere that this conversation goes after this, I know Twitch is going to have a problem with <laughs> every single spot of it. So, patrons, hang out for the after show. Kent, you have a game. Let's go on with that because I've got some ideas that we need to explore once the Twitch stream stops. Yeah. Okay. No, we we have we have run out of time for the game. Actually, what? What? Yeah. What? So that's not game... a, that's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you about a game though. So uh Sims 4 is a game. I don't know if you guys have ever played it. Yeah. Um but Steph plays it and she plays it on Twitch now on her twitch.tv slash Sassien channel. Sassien is spelled S A S C I E N N E. I encourage everybody to go check that out. Not only because Steph is cool and it's really um, fun to watch her play that game, but she has a Ritual Misery family that she made during an Amosless episode of Ritual Misery a few weeks ago. Mm. And it is hilarious. <laughs> this could be bad. It All could right. be. But I'm it's sad hilarious. there's no game. I, 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 like- we, we, I, I don't... Uh, 
um, post show. We'll do Patreon.com the- slash ritual misery <laughs> and you will get the game <laughs> in the post show. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, uh, Crunchy, where can people find more of you and your, your exploitation? I mean, your exploration. I mean, uh, your exploits. Uh, Crunchy 89 on Twitter. There we go. Kent, how about you, man? RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. Del Noche or Del, Del Noche 77 everywhere else. And you can find me at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. Stay tuned next week for a very special political version of Ritual Misery, Sans Kent, um, that I will deconflict, as we mentioned in the pre show, uh, where I finally get to tell you my real opinions about everything. I'm going to tune in for that one. <laughs> Me too. Uh, you can find the show at Ritual Misery on Twitter. And of course, stop by RitualMisery.com for the all these links, more show notes and all the things and all the stuffs and, and uh, yeah, all everything. Um, Kent, where are we supposed to go from here? Um, d- uh, d- uh, d- did you already say Ritual Misery on Twitter? I did. <laughs> yep. Did you say that you can go to RitualMisery.com for all the things? I did. Well, those are the important ones. You can also go to Discord, bit.ly slash RMP Discord, and join our conversation. It's so much fun over there. Um, but the best thing that I want to tell people is Kevin McLeod is awesome. The entire internet owes him a debt of gratitude. In half and, of Hollywood, by the way. Yes, in half of Hollywood. He has probably, he probably holds the record for the most IMDb credits. Yep. Um, and thank you for listening for Kent, for me, for Crunchy, and for you. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. <laughs> Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Um, uh, wow. Okay. So th- there was no music and then there was loud music. <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs>